What's going on everyone and welcome to episode number 18 of the Python Project. Today's episode is all about saving time with regards to food. We're going to write a script that will randomly pick a meal for us to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Stay tuned until the end of the video where I'll show you how to use Python to generate a seven day meal plan. Make sure to subscribe for more videos of the Python project and to hit the like button as it really supports the channel. To show that programming isn't done smoothly, let me walk you through some of the issues I had while writing the script. Pause the video here to see how I thought about this since it definitely wasn't completed in one take. If you want more practice with Selenium, check out the suggestion at the top of the video. Cool, now that we have that covered, let's start writing some code. Let's import everything we'll need. I found a list of breakfast food items on Wikipedia, so let's use the Wikipedia API to get that information. We'll start off by initializing the Wikipedia API to be used in English. However, this can work for any language that Wikipedia supports. Check out the video above to get more practice with the Wikipedia API and to learn how to speed read, which is always a useful skill to have. Now we need to get the contents of the breakfast page. List of breakfast foods here is the title of the article. The easiest way to get the items is by splitting the information on the page into sections. Wikipedia API can do that for us. On this page, section zero has all of the food items. You'll return a Wikipedia page section object if you don't call sections again like I did here. But if you call it, you'll return a list. So let's see what this looks like. As you can see, here are all the breakfast foods, and it's split up by letter. So the zeroth index of this list are all the breakfast foods that start with A. In this section, we can't extract each food item element by element. The Wikipedia API is useful, but there are some quirks to it that require some creative thinking. So if we want that information, we have to call it like so. Now we need to do this for each section and extract each item. I made an empty list called all breakfast food. Then I loop through the sections in breakfast food list and look for new lines in the string. If no new lines exist in the string, then it means that there's only one item in there and I can append it to the list like I do right here. If there are new lines in the string, as we can see here for all of the foods that start with the letter A, then I'll split the string by the new lines, which will return a list of each item. And then I'll loop through that list so I can append each item to all breakfast food. For some reason, I still had entries in all breakfast food that had either subsection or section like we see right here. So I can remove that with this code. This uses a lambda function where x is each item from all breakfast food and it checks to make sure that it isn't either subsection or section, and then it returns a true or false. Filter will then apply only what is returned to be true against my list, all breakfast food. So if an entry was labeled as subsection, my Lambda function would say that it is false because subsection does appear in this list, and then filter would not include this entry in the data it returns. In order to extract the data from filter, you have to apply a data type against it, which is why I turned it into a list. For lunch, this was way easier since I found a website that had 52 lunch ideas. I scrape the page to get the HTML and then I parse through it with beautiful soup. After inspecting the page, I found that all of the food items were in an H3 tag. So this list comprehension right here looks for all of the h3 tags within the page, and then it looks for all of the links within the h3 tag, and it extracts the text from that link. It was easier doing it this way rather than getting the text directly from the h3 tag, where extra formatting was involved in order to get the name of the food item. For dinner, it was basically the same thing. The only difference was this last line with all dinner food. If you look at dinner foods, There's some extra info that we don't need at the top, like about gen, categories, etc. 
and all the way up to these blank lines. And then at the end, it's the same idea with 17 useful tips, 50 easy snacks, etc., all the way up to Instagram. So all dinner food doesn't include these entries. That's why we have this index right here from the 14th element to the 146th. Finally, we can create our random food generator. First, we have to initialize the variable second input as an empty string since we'll need to use it later on. We'll create a while loop that will only run if second input is not equal to capital Q. Q stands for quit, which we'll specify later in the loop. We ask the user what they're looking to eat, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and they'll type in either B, L, or D. The second while loop right here, make sure that we pick B, L, or D. If we pick anything other than these three choices, the program will ask us to try again. Over here, it will print out the food item at random that corresponds to our input, followed by two new lines to make it easier to read. Then we have a second prompt that asks the user if they would like to start over by pressing R, or if they would like to exit out of the program by pressing Q. Now, what about that seven day meal plan I mentioned at the beginning of the video? Well, we can use the same logic we wrote earlier. So first, I'll need to create a list of weekdays. Then we can write a function that will cycle through each weekday and randomly pull a breakfast, lunch, and dinner item. So we have the function email weekly meal plan, and in that function is a list called meal plan. I append each day of the week to the list followed by all three meals. I pull those meals the same way I pulled them from earlier. I use random.choice and I look through the list of foods we gathered up above, such as all breakfast food, all lunch food, and all dinner food. I include a backslash n after each food item right here, because when we email this, it will make it much easier to read. In order to actually email this, I wrote the following code. To get my email credentials, I have to open up my email and password in these text files. This is only for an example purpose, but if you wanted to make this much safer, you would set up your email and password as environment variables on your computer and then call them into the script. It's far more secure than reading a text file, that said, this email is my garbage email account, so it's really not a big deal. I instantiate the variable message by calling email message. The subject is set to weekly meal plan. Thanks, Python. I send the email from myself and to myself. Then I pass in the variable meal plan that has a breakdown of what to eat and when. So this part looks pretty funky, but let me break it down. If we were to run this, We can see that meal plan is structured like so. We have the day of the week, followed by all three food items, the next day of the week, the next three food items, etc., etc. By adding in two new lines after each element in meal plan, it will make it much easier to read once we open it up in Gmail. Finally, I use SMTP lib to connect to Gmail server through port 465, which is a standard secure port for emails, and I pass in my login credentials along with the contents of the message. We can test this out, but remember that if you're using Gmail, make sure to turn on less secure app access, otherwise Gmail will block Python. In order to turn it on, it's just a quick Google search and it will lead you to a page where you can turn it on, just make sure that you're signed in. So let's run this function. We can see right now I don't have any emails. However, if I were to run this, an email is populated. We have our subject, weekly meal plan. Thanks, Python. And if we open it up, you can see this is why I included those backslash ends. It makes it much easier to read because now it's split up by day and it has the meal plan followed by a colon so we can easily see what we should eat. All seven days of the week are there, so it looks like everything is working. Now you can ask your computer to give you a recommendation as to what you should eat, and it'll even generate an entire meal plan for you on a weekly basis. Stay tuned for more videos, so make sure to subscribe, and if you could, please drop a like below to support the channel.
please drop a like, please drop a like, please drop a like.